and the fifth basis for our reward in eternity is our acts of kindness. In Luke chapter 6, verse 35 to 38, the Bible says, But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. He said, Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. He said, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with her, it shall be measured unto you again. And this is an earthly kind of judgment. The Bible says that with the same measure you measure, it shall be measured to you. Just imagine, if you believe the word of God to be the word of God that doesn't fall to the ground, say not, not a jot, not a teacher will fall to the ground, but all will be fulfilled. And it's telling you the same measure you will measure will be meted back to you. It means there are acts of kindness that we must be involved in. Maybe you are serving somewhere. The way you serve is the way people will serve you. Praise God. If you sow wickedness, you will reap wickedness. And one thing I must say is that you can't sow a seed of grain and reap a seed of grain. It usually comes in bunches. Have you ever seen when somebody sow uh, a seed of granite and it came back as one seed? No. They came, they will always usually come in bunches. And that's why you will see that the harvest will be plenteous. And that's why you, if you sow a drum of wickedness, it will be an ocean or a sea of wickedness that will come back to you. May this never be your portion. In the name of Jesus. In Matthew 25, verse 40, the Bible says, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, In as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done unto me. So, basically, what the king, what the Bible is saying here is that your acts of kindness transcend people around you. It can even be people you meet on the street, the poor beggar, the orphan. You know, people you see in thy need, if you can help, help. Of course, there is discernment to these things. But of course, your acts, if you know that your acts of kindness is also a basis for your reward, I think your outlook towards life will be different. There is much wickedness in our, in, 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 in our countries of the world simply because of man's inhumanity to man. People are so wicked. A person can hoard the amenities or resources that are meant to better the lives of many thousands of people under their quiver. In the end, they will say they cut them with all kinds of billions in their accounts. Some, they say, in their houses. It's so wicked that people even build houses nowadays and store money under there with AC. In the end, some even decay. They will carry us and, and go and burn. Why there are people, poor people on the street, looking for food to eat on a daily basis simply because of man's inhumanity to man. And even the so, uh, the so-called depend or consumers are not still left out. If you claim you are not the producer and you are a consumer, in this case, I'm talking about those who are rich and those that are poor. It is interwoven. Sometimes we think that you know the, our deliverance will come from the government. It's a lie. Our deliverance will come from each and every one of us. Do you know that if they say, uh, when they say uh, the government have increased a particular thing, and we know that this particular amount they are talking about, they say the dollar has increased, for example, and then other prices of things that are even produced locally have increased. And when you ask them, they will say, that is because we import these things. Okay, what of the things that you produce locally? Why have the prices of these things also skyrocketed? These are the questions. So you know that people are just trying to live on others because of wickedness. But it starts with us knowing that every act of kindness that we do will attract the reward in heaven. If we have this at the back of your mind, our mind, even if you are a seller, you can't oversell at exorbitant prices. 
just because you want to, you know, make ends meet. You will beat your, your body. That's self denial. And say, no, I can't over, I can't over, over hype this price. Why? Because if I'm the one also buying, I won't love it when I'm buying at this price. We must first of all be the first judge of our life. The Bible says, if you judge yourself, you will not be judged. Praise God. Hallelujah. Cornelius was simply remembered because of his good deeds. In Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 4, the Bible says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his heart, his house. He said, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in the vision every day about ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked up, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. That was when the Gentiles for the first time began to speak in tongues. Praise God. Because they thought before it was only for the Jews. But Cornelius, because of his arms giving, his good deeds, opened up this particular possibility. And the Bible says, on the Gentiles also, they were being granted repentance of life. Praise God. So let us have it at the back of our mind that our good deeds we attract rewards. How about Tabitha? She was raised back to life simply because of her good deeds. The Bible says in Acts chapter 9 verse 36, it says, Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. He said, This woman was full of good works and arms deed, which she did. And the Bible evidently said she died. And in Acts chapter 9, verse 39 to 41, the Bible says, Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, he said, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the wid widows stood by him, weeping, and showing the coats and garments which Doc has made. He said, Why she was with them. He said, But Peter put all them forth. And then he knelt down and prayed. And that's how her eyes was opened. And in the end, she was brought back to life because they say they showed the good, the clothes that she made even for them. Now, the thing is, if our acts of kindness, even on the earth, can receive reward, is it in heaven that there will be no reward for us? Most times we do wickedness simply because we don't know that if we do good, there are rewards. Just as we invest today for a better future tomorrow, it's the same way you are investing. That's why Jesus says, store up treasures in heaven. We know that neither moth nor rot doth corrupt. People that store money in underground with AC, they still have this money's decay sometimes. And they carry it to go and burn. But if you store in heaven, there's no decay there. Your acts of kindness is also some of the commodities you can store in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 